everybody, it's Ian Aber, and we are back with another episode of Straight People, the podcast for straight people by queer people, because straight people don't have what? Enough. They don't have enough. They control all the resources, run every government on the fucking planet, but we got this cute little podcast just to explain them to everybody. So um, welcome welcome our, our straight avatar of the, of the episode. You will be representing straight culture if you end up being straight. Uh, please welcome... Uh, the very, very funny Mr. Jay Light, everybody. Hey, Jay Light, how are you? Hey, hi, I'm good, Ian. Thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm both honored and terrified <laughs> to speak on behalf of straight people today. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like the terror and honor are pretty much what straight people are all about, right? So we'll get, oh, right, yeah. we'll get right to it. Um, how do you identify? Uh, I identify as straight. Yeah. That's yeah. very brave of you in the modern era. To just- Especially, I mean, Pride Month coming at me right away. I know, right? You, some people would think that I would just have gay people on in June. But no, we're not doing that. We don't do that here. Um, you so go. you identify as straight. How's that going for you? It's going pretty well. Um, yeah. I've been, I'm in a relationship. I've been in a relationship uh, for like uh, coming up on four years. Nice. Congratulations. Um, Thank is it a com- you. Is it a comedian? You, are you dating a comedian? I am not dating a comedian, which good is a good move. Yeah, yes. good for you. Because <laughs> it would be, you. I think it would be hard for you to not be the funniest one in the relationship. I feel like that would be a big issue. Because <laughs> 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 there's always a funny one and a not funny one, and you know what I mean. Like, have you yeah. ever? Yeah, yeah. I've, da- I've, I've dated comedians before, and there's definitely that. Uh, it's like compa- combative a little yeah. bit. It gets too competitive. Yeah. It's like when things ex- when you both experience something at the same time is like you, who claims it who calls dibs on the oh this mm-hmm. funny thing just happened I dibs um, yep I wrote that down first in my little notebook <laughs> I've always wondered what comedians were writing in their little notebooks uh, I've always wondered that the whole time uh, I don't have I don't carry a notebook I just remember it I guess but um, oh good for you all right, right. well oh, the cool. older I get the less that seems to work but. I only, I only talk about being gay, so it's pretty easy. But uh, so <laughs> as a, the top of your mind, right? As a straight <laughs> person, um, uh, when did you when did you know what gay was? So like when you're born straight, you're born, especially when you're a white male, you're just whole and complete. You're mm-hmm. like the default mode. The whole universe is set up for you, and then you realize, oh wait, there's other stuff out there. So when was what was the first thing you remember? Like either hearing a wor- the word gay or a slur, or was it like a, a, somebody on TV? Was it someone you knew? I mean, so I heard, uh, I had a fair amount of gay slurs levied at me growing up by like bullies. Um, yeah. And some of them are, you know, a little more innocuous. I've, I've heard fart knocker be levied around a bunch, which... <laughs> occurred to me much later in life i'm like oh that's a reference to to anal sex i guess a Um, fart knocker that's pretty i mean like i appreciate the creativity there do you know what i'm saying so like yeah yeah it's a it listen it's uh, not often you get like a like a four syllable word in there when you're uh when you're insulting somebody right i just Um, like the idea that somebody was like you know what the fag's not enough for me let me get a piece of paper out let me do a little mind map and let's see what we get mm-hmm. you know what i mean like butt sex farts <laughs> knocking on the door of the butt oh fart knocker you know what i'm mean? knocking like, on those farts yeah i gotta go test this out like there's not an open mic for slurs so i gotta just find someone who looks a little gay did it bo- <laughs> did it bother you like when you were when you were called that did you know you were straight and it didn't affect you or were you like what are they seeing what what are people seeing outside of me that i don't see in myself I, I knew I was straight. So the, that stuff didn't affect me. I never felt, I never felt like queer or questioning or anything. Um, the one, I mean, this is a weird, like straight thing that hurt me. I was like, as far as the perception thing goes, somebody one time 
I stopped wearing shorts that were a certain length for a while because everyone was like, oh, those are shorts for gay guys. So you don't oh. wear those. Don't wear shorts that are above the knee. Okay. And I was like, okay. Wow, I above guess. the knee. Wow. Yeah. That's like, wow, how bold, you know? I mean, this is, I grew up in, I grew up in the suburbs of Dallas. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people who are already naturally wearing like Jinko jeans and, and American Eagle and Abercrombie long shorts. Yeah. Um, well, I grew, up in the, I grew up in the 80s, so it went from, like, everybody wore a short with, like, a five-inch inseam, which is very short, mm -hmm. to people wearing what you're describing of those, like, it, 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 they're basically basketball shorts, so, like, they're almost like male culottes, because they're, they go all the way below the knee, <laughs> yeah. it's like, what, when did, when did straight men become so ashamed of their thighs, do you know what I mean? I don't like, know, they yeah. shouldn't be, throw yeah. in, I mean, if you throw in a cod piece, it's basically something out of some Shakespearean art play that you're going to be wearing some <laughs> some old uh much ado about nothing costumes yeah right um the first and then the first time i actually met a gay person who was out was when i was in high school um i was in uh, i was a theater kid and there was i mean i'm sure there were other <clears throat> kids in the theater department who were closeted but there was one guy tj who was out and he was you know everybody loved him super super cool guy very fun did uh all sorts of like costume and makeup and tech stuff and uh but that was the first experience i'd ever had with a gay person at all yeah. uh and it was weird because i grew up very religious and in my church amazingly enough they did not i wasn't like in the fire and brimstone kind of mode that you sort of associate with the south yeah. Um, but they did never reference like, oh, gay people are going to hell or any of that kind of stuff. So when I did meet a gay person for the first time, I was like, oh, this is just a very, uh, you know, fun, pleasant man. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> and so I never had to deal with any of the like the like the hateful programming that I think sort of gets put into. And what, uh, year, what years would you say you were going, like so like what what years were you sort of like middle school, high school? Was that like early 2000s yeah, yeah i was uh middle school went from 2001 to 2003 and then high school up till 2008 yeah and uh what what denomination what uh I, mostly presbyterian uh, a little yeah, bit of presbyterians Methodist. don't really go hard on anybody or methodists yeah. you know what i mean like i actually was I, I grew up catholic and before i came out as gay i my parents found out that i was sneaking out over to the methodist church on wednesday nights and uh, they confronted me. They're like, are you a Methodist? You know, uh, my mom was like furious. She's like, you're going to we're going to different heavens. I was like, I don't think that's how that works. But, <laughs> but I went but I went to the Methodist church because they had snacks. That was literally the only reason I went. I was like, oh, yeah, they have Doritos we and talk about Jesus. I can fucking listen to this bullshit for a little bit longer. For yeah, some Doritos. we had yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of youth group related things that were also food related. There was a lot yeah. of pizza. There was a lot of fried chicken. Yeah. Methodists do it right. Like Catholics are like. You can eat after this four hour service. Maybe mm -hmm. we might have some food, but well, that's interesting. Like pre Presbyterian, like it's usually like Catholics and like the time frame you're talking about, especially like, you know, gay people weren't really talked about in the church at all. It's sort of like, you don't mention it, mm -hmm. um, but like right around the time when the whole gay marriage movement started, uh, a lot of people think that the gay marriage movement started with gay people, but I think it was really the churches and the religious right groups going, they're going to want to get married. We got to stop right. this. You know what I mean? And then it was like the gay people heard that and were like, Oh, I wasn't even thinking about getting married, but since you're going to try to prevent me from it, <laughs> Oh, mobile, you know, there was I'm a definite, like, I don't think it was, I think it was on both sides sort of happening, but so it's interesting that you kind of came up in that time and then didn't necessarily hear about it in the church. Um, so you live in Los Angeles now. How long have you been in LA? I've lived in LA for uh, almost nine years. It'll be nine yeah. years in August. So you definitely have seen some gay people since you've been in LA. Oh right? yeah. I lived yeah. with a lesbian for a couple of years. Yeah. How was that? Um, she's great. Great yeah. roommate. Um, <laughs> she's now, well, she's quite, um, she's killing it in the, as far as gay and religion goes, because she's yeah. figured out a crossover. Yeah. She's um, a, a, a gay Christian musician now. Oh, nice. She's got a, she was like on NPR for stuff, but she and I go way back. We met back in school before she was out. Yeah. And then we were hanging out one time before uh, she came, she moved out to LA and she came out to me and I was like, oh, great, cool. Yeah. Um, and then we lived together for like a couple of years. Cause that's my, I mean, that's my standard response now. Whenever I have 
uh, someone comes out to me, I'm like, yeah. great, good for you. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Um, um, did did she ever act as your wingman? Did you ever have her as a lesbian wingman? No, I uh, I never tapped into that. I feel like that's a resource I should have <laughs> tried to use. Yeah, we did go to. She had she did help me out. I mean, we lived in West Hollywood. I lived in West Hollywood for most of the time that I lived in L.A. So you know, we would have pride parties for the when the parade would go, and we would have people like over to to like pregame at our place before the parade. Yeah. Um, and there was one year where she was uh, there was a girl who I had had like my eye on who also went to school with us. So she was really trying to like plant the seed, I think. Yeah. But that's the closest I ever got to having to like <laughs> hitting a bar with her and, and having her wingman <laughs> for me. Right. OK. Um, so before we switch over to the next little phase of this of the podcast, you're doing great. Still straight based on my scoring here. Okay, um, okay. Tell people where they can find <laughs> you. Or plug whatever you want to plug. Do it in the middle. We do we do the plug in the middle now. There you go. Um, so tell uh, people where they can follow you, what you're working on. Of course. Like yeah. So uh, you can follow me at Diet J on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I have a podcast called Blockbusting. If you like movies, it's a podcast about movies that people don't like and why okay. they don't like them. Nice. So uh, check that out. You can listen to it wherever you get podcasts. Uh, what's the, what movie do you like? What what have you covered recently? Let's see. Uh, the last couple did we did a couple weird. Uh, Spanish language movies. There's one Mexican movie called Weros that I actually really enjoyed, but the guy who uh, I had on hated. Um, I did this movie called Skins, which was sort of like weird and gross that I uh, that, that we both didn't like. And we also did uh, Silence of the Lambs very recently oh, with the, uh, the original. Or, the original, yeah. yeah. And she, um, my guest Amy Silverberg, hated the movie because she hates scary movies, and she yeah. turned it off halfway through and didn't finish it. So. <laughs> the whole prim- the whole episode basically turned into me trying to convince her to finish watching the movie. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one because like when I saw it originally, I liked it, and then there's a lot of transphobic um, imagery. The, I mean, the whole right. Buffalo Bill character basically, and the way they discuss the character is very dated. Um, mm-hmm. And like trans people, so like the idea that Buffalo Bill skins women and takes their skins is mm-hmm. sort of like the ultimate like what people think trans people are doing is like, you know, cannibalizing and other ideas. Right. So yeah. yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, I watched it, grew up with it. And now when I watch it under the lens of kind of the modern eye, I'm like, Oh, okay. This one's not as It definitely, as it's got, yeah, it's got some old outdated stuff. Yeah. Uh, so but maybe just focus on uh, Clarice Starling a little bit. Yeah, true. That is true. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to switch here real quick. Okay. So this is the, we're going to play a couple of games. Up. Um, the first is, is that I'm going to, I'm going to say a quote. It's either from a song or a movie or maybe something that RuPaul says, and you're going to try to guess what the blank is. Okay. So you're okay. going to fill in the blank. Okay. Are you okay. ready? It's yes. very, so just whatever you think of. And if you don't know, just say, you know, guess, just guess, you know, <laughs> comedically right. guess. This is all for comedic purposes. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. The first one is very simple. Uh, Sissy <laughs> that blank. Oh God! I mean, I I I'm pretty sure this is a RuPaul or RuPaul's Drag Race thing. Um, Sissy, that walk? Yes, ding ding ding, correct. Okay, and what I didn't tell you was I mixed in some things that straight people will know too. Okay, so these some of these are movie quotes from straight movies that I think any straight person will know. Okay, so this is okay. So you have to decide which is which. Okay, so the first one, Sissy, that walk. RuPaul did a great job. The next one is you had me at blank. You had me at hello. Straight people know that shit. Okay. Perfect. I've actually never seen Jerry Maguire. You don't need to. That's the you whole don't movie. Need to. Yeah. You don't need to see it. Um, okay. Bring back my blank. I'm at a loss for this one. Bring back my uh, pizza. <laughs> okay. Incorrect. Bring <laughs> back my girl. She says that at the end of any, every episode, towards the end, when they finally do the final judgment on RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay. It's been, it's been on for 13 seasons. It's about time you watch one. Okay. I guess. So, <laughs> I guess. look, I have to watch a football game every year. You can watch one episode of RuPaul. Okay, Netflix. fair. I hear you. Right? That's a good that's okay. a good point. Sashay Shante blank on the runway. Sashay Shante blank on the runway. Mm. I mean, this is another one that like I ugh, it seems like it's a RuPaul thing. Um and I know it's got, I mean, 
it's got to feel like it's something rhyming, but I can't think of anything that rhymes sort of even vaguely with sachet or Shantae. I'll give you uh, a hint. It's an animal. It's an animal. So sachet, Shantae, animal on the runway. Um, sh- I can't even think of uh, this. Is I can't even think of an animal. I'm thinking of fabric. Chambray. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe it's kind of gay you even know that um panther <laughs> on the runway panther panther on the, panther on the runway that's right why panther I, that i don't know that's a good question um probably because it's like because it's a sleek animal that like moves very like with a lot of shoulder Man, I should, my high school mascot was the panthers see that i but went it, to georgia just sorry georgia state university go panthers that's yeah, Collierville yeah. Heritage High School, go Panthers. And but we also had, well, they, we had a janky panther. Our, uh, they had a statue of a panther in like the cafeteria, but yeah. it was just a jaguar that they spray painted black. You uh, can see the spots. <laughs> that is janky. Um, that <laughs> sounds like Texas to me. Okay. I'll have what she is having. Boom, you did it. Harry you met Sally. St- also haven't seen when Harry met Sally, but you don't need to. You don't it's even just need to ingrained. See it. Yep. I hereby christen this budget Barbie camper blank, and it's the title of the movie. I hereby christen this budget Barbie camper blank. Oh, man. Ah, uh, I have no idea. Troop Beverly Hills. <laughs> That's a good guess. Um, uh, I hereby christen this budget Barbie camper Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, that's it. I forgot that is a that is a gay movie. Yeah. Okay. So this is the last one. The okay. Easiest one. I've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking. Tu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. <laughs> <laughs> no, plain. Plain. Okay. Awesome. You did a good. That, that was. You did pretty good. Okay. Now I have emailed you something. I emailed you six lines Ooh. from um, some iconic gay movies. So bring up your email. Okay. And I'm going to bring these up on my phone so I can look at them without the light on my face. Um, okay. So do you see, do you have them? I do. They're right okay. here in front of me. So now what I want you to do is just base what you read in the line, deliver it the way you think it was delivered in the movie. <laughs> okay. So the first one is from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Okay. Oh, this is an interesting one. I'm trying to get in into a character that I didn't know. You can do it with an Australian accent if that is one of your skills. Oh, I can do. I can sort of do an Australian accent. We're gonna. We're gonna probably botch this, but it's okay. now listen here, you mullet. Why don't you just light your tampon and blow your box apart? Because it's the only bang you're ever gonna get, sweetheart. This is pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give that an A. That was amazing. Okay. Oh, so sweet. number number two, iconic line. Uh, you don't have to sing it. You just have to say it from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay. Uh, so come up to the lab and see what's on the slab. I see you shiver with anticipation. All right. That was okay. That was all right. We'll I'm trying to think because I've heard Tim Curry and other things, but I've yeah. never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show. There's a lot so of I'm movies trying to you like, haven't. Well, they're all gay movies, so I guess that makes sense. Okay. There's a lot of straight movies I haven't seen either, <laughs> though. To be Like, I haven't seen Jaws. That seems like a pretty straight classic yeah right i literally had we were gonna need a bigger boat was one of the quotes i skipped it uh um <laughs> okay number three this is uh tu wong fu thanks for everything julie newmar and you are playing vita bo m uh that is um uh the patrick swayze character okay god I, this is a movie, i only know the title of this movie it's okay and i know patrick swayze yeah so Little Latin boy in drag. Why are you crying? All right. Well, not John Travolta. That, I don't know what that was. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. shit. <laughs> um, Easy mix up in my head. Yeah, right. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, it was more of like, little Latin boy in drag. Why are you crying? It was more of that. <laughs> okay. okay. So <laughs> I'm, co- I'm coaching you on movies you've never seen. Okay. So number four, this is, uh, this is, this is from Valley of the Dolls. So this is a movie about straight people. Um, but it's so camp that gay people love it. So is this the one that uh, that Roger Ebert wrote? No, that well, no, that's is that beyond, beyond the Valley, beyond of the Dolls? Valley of the Dolls. And I think that was I think Rex Reed wrote. No, no, no. Roger Ebert wrote it. You're right. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Roger Ebert. Very problematic. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, OK. Yeah, OK, go ahead. So this is your uh, you're like you got to give this a lot of well, because this is a, you're mad. This is a you're mad kind of scene. 
Okay. I'm going to back up from the mic a little bit. I don't want to peek. Okay. The only hit that comes out of a Helen Lawson show is Helen Lawson. And that's me, baby. Remember? <laughs> This is so good. Okay. <laughs> this is my new favorite game. Okay. I, uh, so uh, final, well, two more. Number five is from uh, a movie that straight people love, uh, Brokeback Mountain. Um, I didn't think there was enough gay sex in it, honestly. They didn't like the gay sex. Like, y- you need to see them fucking. They're just like in the dark, right. right? I've done, I've, I did actually, I've done a blockbusting episode about, uh, about Brokeback Mountain with Akeem Woods, and he was like, the gay sex is completely unrealistic in this movie. And I was like, yeah, that tracks. Right, yeah. I mean, you know how bad it would stink in that tent when they were done? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they would want to get out of it immediately, you know? Mm. All right, so go ahead. I love Akeem, by the way. He's so funny. Um, so yeah. go ahead and do this line. I wish Jake. I knew how to quit you. All right, do it one more time. And you're Jake Gyllenhaal saying this to Heath Ledger. Oh, I did it as, yeah, I did it the opposite I way around. That. I, I did Heath that. Ledger. I wish I knew how to quit you. Okay. It's more of a Colonel Sanders. Uh, that's fun. <laughs> All right. Final one. Uh, they should not- be a good Colonel Sanders. Wouldn't they he? should have put him in there whenever they did, uh, whenever they swapped everybody around. <laughs> um, All right. So the final one is from the 1970 production of Boys in the Band. Um, uh, this is a sort of problematic movie because it's very racist. Uh, but I did pick a line that isn't racist, hopefully. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. So now you are okay. basically addressing a room full of people. You're the ugliest person in the room. Let's just put okay. it at that. Okay. Okay. I can I can lock into that. I've been that person before. And you're not yelling this. You're just saying it with power. You know, like I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change my posture up a little bit. Okay. What I am, Michael, is a 32 year old ugly pockmarked Jew fairy. And if it takes me a little while to pull myself together, and if I smoke a little grass before I get up the nerve to show my face to the world, it's nobody's goddamn business but my own. And how are you this evening? <laughs> okay. That was excellent. Great job, Jay. You did amazing. Thank you. Um, I feel like I inadvertently did a little Christian Bale American Psycho. A little last, bit. A little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Uh, you 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 make you make choices you made choices um okay so i have i'm gonna do a couple more questions for you um way. okay why do straight men piss in gatorade bottles because it's convenient straight men here's the thing i i have pissed not in a gatorade bottle but i have pissed in several water bottles like the okay. big ones yeah and it's just uh it's convenience more than anything it's a desire to uh to like to not have to get up and do the thing like we don't mind having a little bit of a bottles that's full of piss around or underneath our bed as long as it means that we can conveniently roll over and plug our dick into something in the middle of the night uh, never had such an honest answer i appreciate that okay so final question uh you are at a <laughs> what most most three guys i've asked this have denied doing it and i'm like it is a thing okay it is a thing. And the last straight guy I had on was like, oh, I've never heard of that. I'm like, I mean, the Gatorade bottle thing, it's it's easy. I can understand the Gatorade because it's a wide mouth. I have always preferred a regular water bottle because you don't I don't fit my whole dick in there. Just the tip. And then you just pee and you just like you don't have to worry about spilling anything. Right. Yeah. OK. <laughs> well, Gatorade bottle. What if you get your whole dick in there and then you pull it out and it's it's piss displacement? You're- you don't want to deal with that. That's probably true. If you're pissing like 32 ounces at a time, though, you've got other problems, I think. True. You know what I mean? 100%. You can fill an entire fucking catering bottle. All right. Final question. You've been doing great. Um, you're at a wedding. You're, you've gone back to Texas. Okay. You're at like your sister's friends or whatever relative, cousins, aunts, friends, wedding. You're not close to these people. Okay. Okay. You're, you're in a barn. It, that's where they're having the reception. You're drinking out of a cocktail out of a mason jar with the name of the bride and the groom written on it and like gold Sharpie pens or whatever. Yep. And they play, it's time for the father daughter dance, uh, father of the bride and the bride dance. What song is playing when they dance? Oh, pro- honestly, probably I hope you dance. <laughs> So it's a little dead on, but I think that's a good answer. It's number a good, it's a, number it's one a answer. Solid straight wedding song. That's a great. It is. It is number one answer is butterfly kisses. But that, um, I hope you dance. I think that's pretty high up there. Oh, butterfly good. kisses is good too. Right? I th- I hope you dance. It kind of pulls dual duty because it's also a great like graduation video song. Yeah. Right. 
But you all, you never play like vitamin C's graduation at a wedding. You, but yeah. it, it's got it's rare to have something that has crossover potential like that. I suppose that's I, I guess that makes it even more of a better song. So that's good. OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Jay, you're that's it. That's your episode of Straight People. Um, according to my score, you are still straight. Um, so All right. congratulations on that. Let your girlfriend know that uh, she is not, she's invested four years accurately. You know what I mean? So I will give her the heads up. All right. Awesome. You can uh, find Jay on Instagram at diet. Jay. Uh, he did his plug in the middle. His podcast is called blockbusting blockbusting. And he busts on movies that people hate. Uh, my name is Ian neighbor. This has been straight people. Uh, we'll be back with some weekly episodes uh, next week. So yay. Thanks Ian. Yeah, man, that was great. Thank you so much. Thank you.